hello everybody. Uh, this is our first uh, webinar series uh, 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 from our new show um, called Tawheed, Spiritual Unity of the Three Principles uh, with my co-host Harry Dervinsky and myself, Omar Ben Musa. So um, just uh, before we start the webinar, just want to uh, make it clear oh, about, you know, that we're gonna be using some um, uh, some words like divine mind, um, the infinite intelligence behind life, God, uh, and they all point at the same thing. They all point at this infinite intelligence behind life, the source behind uh, you know our heartbeat, our what makes flower bloom, and etc. So. Also, this um, this Facebook group and these shows are mainly focused on keeping uh, the three principles as uncovered by Mr. Banks, Sid Banks, uh, as pure as possible and as simple and uh, uh, easy to understand for everybody. So we are here to explore together and create a space where we could all have insights. And uh, one of the things that we uh, want to focus on as well is that um, uh, diversity, because what we see in the three P word that it, there is, um, like in, in a in in a like conferences and stuff, like we don't see like diverse people as we want to, and uh, as I've heard from you know Sid Bank students like Harry and uh, other people like they used like have a lot of people from all over the world from all backgrounds from you know you know different skin colors and and that's that's missing right now so we yeah we want to focus on that as well and uh yeah i'll give it uh, over to harry so could you just you know say something about yourself sure um uh, uh... My name's Harry Derbitsky, call me Harry, please. And uh, basically, um, from, from when I was exposed to Sydney Banks, the journey was a spiritual journey. It, it didn't have a strong psychological component to it. It was, your con it was our connection inside to what now is called mind, universal mind. And, and the important thing with universal mind, you might call it Allah, whatever word you want. And if I use a phrase that you're uncomfortable with, that please, I'm no, I don't intend it. Sometimes I just don't understand how to present it uh, in a way that's acceptable. So, so we have universal mind or Allah. And one of the important things with that is it's in you. So we're talking about what you experience inside yourself and how it expresses itself when it's connected to the universality of everything, the oneness of life. And that, that power was what Sid talked about all the time on Salt Spring Island, except he used the word spiritual, truth, wisdom, those types of, those types of things. And the reason it's important to understand that it's in you is because you're never broken. You're always pure. You're always able to access that no matter what you create through the illusionary state of too much thinking, what I call Mr. Noisy up here. And when that quiets down, you're automatically connected to the oneness of life. And that's why there's three principles. You need to have an understanding that you're connected to Allah or connected to the universality of everything. You are, after all, you are part of it. And the other thing is, since it's a spiritual world, it's also a world of thought. And that was Sid was an absolute expert. He was seems to, seemed to have a deeper understanding of how thought 
connected from the spiritual into the physical world, the bridge between those two worlds. And what I've come up with, uh, and Omar's talked about some things about the illusionary state, etc. but what I've come up with is thought permeates through everything. It is everything. There really isn't mind, there's just thought. But that you have to see with an insight. And when you experience that, you, you, you trust it. You see, the more you experience, the more you trust. The more you trust, the more alive the feeling is inside and the easier life gets. And of course, one of the absolute outstanding qualities of the three principles are the outside is not creating your feelings. The quality of your feelings is dictated by the quality of the purity of original thought. And when you think too much, overthinking, you start to separate. So we're going like this, separate, back to one. Separate, back to one. And every time we come back home or go inside, we not only feel more alive, wiser, connected, our life gets easier, more practical, and we just find out, actually it wasn't me that created all that love and stuff. It was really something far more mystical, far more delicious, far more smarter. In fact, I find myself kind of boring up here. It's really uh, kind of like just a bunch of noise. And as I have faith in allowing that to harmonize with everything, that harmony creates peace of mind. Peace of mind pure thought, pure consciousness, pure mind, all are the same thing. So we're defining for you what mind is. I'm going to give you what I think mind is. Mind is silence. That's where you'll find mind, universal mind. The more silent you step into, the more silent you feel. The more silent you feel, the clearer you see life on the spiritual level, on the physical level, on the emotional level. And let's talk a second about emotions. Emotions is your psychological, the way you think. So you have your thoughts and you create your emotions. A lot of people talk about personal thoughts when they're teaching the three principles. Nothing wrong with it, but it's just the level. Original thought and its connection to personal thought, if you can see that, you've got it. You've got, you can explain how mind works. And I can't explain how mind works unless, because I have to, when I think about it, but I can explain how mind works when I don't think about it. So I'm a big dummy. So with that big shining light, the big dummy, I am going to ask, where, where are we going next, Omar? Well, yeah, um, that's interesting what you just said, Harry. And um, while you were talking about, um, you know, divine mind and thoughts and consciousness, I remember when I, before I come across this, um, this, uh, inside out understanding the way how I lived my life I was always trying to find a way to deal with my stress um, either with um, you know meditating or finding a coping mechanism like smoking or uh, even sometimes drinking and that never helped enough it's always something more always something more always something more um, but when I came across this um, uh, three principles uh, understanding, something shifted, something shifted deep inside of me. And 
I don't need these things to feel better. I don't need these things to feel less stress. In fact, now I have a gentler relationship with stress. And the way I describe it, I describe it is like, I still feel stressed, but I, I wake up to um, the stressful thinking in the moment uh, quicker, you know? It's like when I wake up from a nightmare. And, uh, you know, when I wake up from a nightmare, I don't, you know, keep thinking about it. I just enjoy my day like nothing happened. Like uh, something like, oh, thanks God. <laughs> this is not true. <laughs> so I've had a uh, question actually from a friend of mine yesterday that, was, that is kind of related to this. Uh, so my friend asked me why you're so kind why you're so kind in this, you know, uh, hectic world where uh, some people try to, you know, um, to criticize you and to talk bad about you. And, and when I really pondered on his question, I've realized that I am actually not kind or, you know, <laughs> good person. I, I'm just in that space where once you're aligned with it, and that's what we're talking about here today, this uh, spiritual unity. Once we are aligned with it, there is something that comes as a default mode. This is our, uh, our, uh, our default mode. It's, it's kindness, it's love, it's understanding. The, de the design of this, uh, of this word is, is kind. And the more I am, um, you know, I'm in that space, uh, I am kind. So, yeah. Um, what what uh, what do you think about this, Harry? Like, uh, uh, well, we'll we'll ask each what? of the other two as well for that question. But I'll. The, the, what struck me first of all, everything you you said in my mind is correct. But one of the things, as your level of consciousness grows or rises, you care about other people a little bit more. It, 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 it Obviously, the definition of a lower level of consciousness is that you're thinking a lot about yourself. And as your level of consciousness rises, you start to see the connection between people and you start to feel the love between people and you and and you you see that everything is a, a a learning a growing experience if it is true that it is that then it's good to be kind with it because it allows it to ex us to explore it but more than that sharing sit very much emphasized sharing so first you have to find the feeling within yourself this kind feeling and then you have to share it and the more you share it the more you're planting positive feelings or seeds in the world and the more it gives people hope because after all if you're kind and a person is in a bad mood omar and you're kind they quite often have a smile on their face after and then all of a sudden your heart fills up with that kindness feeling and you feel more your true self so you're out of your own head and into your true self and what that means is you're starting to touch the unlimited potential of who you are it's so gorgeous guys we're so much more than we think we are kindness is just a perfect expression that we have unlimited love in our own hearts and i love that so sabia what do you, how do you see that is she there yes i am i am um... We put you on the spot, Savia. <laughs> uh, I, 
I must confess, Harry, I was um, engaged with my daughter whilst you were talking. So well, I wanted to ask you, and then my daughter interrupted me. You were talking about the original thought and the impersonal thought. Mm -hmm. So that's something I'd like to hear a bit more on. Okay. And what I loved what Omar said, because I was able to listen to Omar, my daughter, you know, uh, was um, I loved what Omar actually said, you know, this principle, it really keeps you connected to your default setting, your default mode. You know, it's effortless to be in that mode. I hadn't thought of it like that. I hadn't reflected on it but it does it makes you much more gentle and loving and compassionate and something actually came up for me and i thought that i've not been i haven't had a certain person's back who made me realize that I've actually not had someone's back and I could have. You know? Could you explain that I, I, a, little, yeah. a little bit more clearly? When, are you saying you feel like you haven't supported someone enough? I haven't been as understanding as I could be oh, because, okay. because my own thinking has been in the way well, isn't that beautiful to see <laughs> i mean that's 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 an insight for sure because it clears whoosh, anything that goes whoosh, that's an insight that's incredible that's yeah. i mean that's been sort of lurking in the background i think my wisdom has been trying to uh, show me that in the last 24 hours but i've been more willing to hear it now yeah, it's the way it works. That's the process for you. Perfect. Beautiful, beautiful. This is so beautiful. And, uh, Harry, talk to me about original thought and how was... All I heard was original thought and then something in... Oh, Renata's joined. I just sent... I've just sent one or two friends a message saying you're on, Omar. So hopefully they'll start coming on. Yeah, good. good. Well, that's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll, so. I'll, I'll, I'll talk a little bit and then we'll get uh, Al Alaya uh, to say a few. Alia. Al okay, yeah. Um, um, <laughs> now, when we talk... Alaya is lovely as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. When, we're, when we're talking about the, the, the principle of thought versus personal thinking, there's, there's a difference. You know, uh, I'm... Once, um, um, uh, I, in my first, in my last book that I wrote, I asked, I, I quoted something Elsie said, and she, I said, a thought creates a feeling. And she corrected me and said, thought creates feeling. See the difference? See, thought, thought is, is, is a spiritual original thing that creates all creation. It's the creative force. And as it comes into us, let's call it Allah's thought. This just for, it comes into us, we can use it wisely or unwisely. It's an impersonal tool. And when we use it unwisely, we get into our personal thinking, where we are interpreting, analyzing, having a big opinion. And we get into overthinking. Overthinking is the number one cause of all problems in the universe overthinking so we we learn the right use of our personal mind 
is more like a, as Fool's Crow, a Native American Indian said, hollow bones. Just flows, more hollow the bones are, the more you're using original thought, Allah's power to experience this personal reality. The more you're thinking about it and interpreting it, the more you're using your own personal intelligence. The problem with personal intelligence is limited. What did you define intelligence at the beginning of the show, Omar? What was that? How you described out the greater, how did you describe that divine intelligence? Yeah, divine mind, the source behind everything in life uh, is this, um, this thing that makes our hearts beat and uh, makes the, the sun comes up and, you know, uh, sunsets. So, so what happens, Sabia, is this doesn't stop. But there, when you have an insight, it actually does stop for a second. But primarily as an ordinary human being, this is going to keep going. So you can't control that. You're not here to control that. You're here to understand how it connects to purity of original thought. The, so when, when that happens, it's kind of like life spiritual. I'm, the spiritual aspect of who I am is expressing itself in the personal level. I'm allowing it to flow through me without personally interfering <laughs> with it. And then all healing happens. Your whole your way you see life, the way you see your kids, the way you see that person that you felt you weren't totally understanding, it becomes self-evident. Because that kindness is who you are. So the principle of thought is not only something to understand, it's to understand that's who you are. The three principles are you. Mm. You are those three principles. They, they are who you are. And they are connecting the world of spirit and the world of form. And if psychologically is kind of how we are wisdom in using quietness to explore what Allah intends for you. You see, the design is perfect. Guaranteed it's going to bring beauty and happiness. Guaranteed if you don't interfere. Guaranteed it's going to be a mess if you think too much. Guaranteed. Which one do you want? Which one, Sabia? <laughs> I want the one that um, brings peace and wisdom and I want to get out of the way. And that's what everybody wants. Everybody on this call, every, including me, that's what, what I want. And the more you step into the silence, the more you're, you get into how, the, how he talked about the greater, the intelligence, the divine intelligence. So yeah. pure thought, divine intelligence, pure consciousness at a certain level are one. You know, I, this reminds me of some, uh, you know, something that happened about an hour ago. Um, we're thinking of changing my daughter's school. She got, it's a fantastic school, school she goes to, but we're thinking of sending her to a different school, an independent school. And, uh, <laughs> and um, people who had the best intentions were trying to uh, encourage or push me to make decisions like you need to make decisions you need to you know you need to know and you need to know the direction and where and what and 
And I just felt, no, I'm going to look at all my options. And I just really feel I'm going to look at all my options and, and I will know, I will feel what's best for my daughter. That's correct. You wait and for that. You wait for that. I feel that I will be, Allah will, God, Allah will open the path. You know, you will, the opening will happen and I just, and that was hard to try and sort of, I mean, I didn't try to convince anyone. I could see, uh, you know, they had best of intentions and, you know, they probably thought I was being airy fairy. <laughs> and, um, and I could see where they was thinking, what planet are you on? What do you mean you're not going to control the situation and direct things and take charge? And, and in a way, that's how I used to be myself. So I could really see, gosh, that was me about 20 years ago, where I had to be in control of everything and I had to know. And I had to be in control of the choices and outcome and so forth. So That's just your wisdom. So you see it? It's just your wisdom. That's what, that's all we're doing is pointing you towards, look how wise you are. Like you already know that you have to wait until you're, you have that secure feeling inside yourself. You already know you care about your daughter more than, you know, that she's really important to you. And that's why you're taking time. But it's your wisdom that's guiding you that don't listen to other people listen to the inner feeling that is the strength of the three principles the strength is you will trust your own instincts if you can't do that you're just a follower and you don't want to be that savvy and i know i can tell from just a little bit we've talked to each other you don't feel like following anybody you you have to know for yourself and it, i'm you, glad you mentioned that harry because I wanted to add something about this uh, exact thing about following. Because what we fall, what I see, um, and what I did, like I was trying to understand the three principles, you know, like a concept. And this, this really, uh, it, it drove me crazy. It drove me crazy, Jeez. and uh, yeah. it was like I was drinking, you know, salty water to quench my thirst. I just get thirsty and thirstier. And um, at some point, I I think I've read something in the Enlightened Gardener, uh, um, Sid, Sid Bank's book, and uh, something really resonated that I don't need to stick with. Forget about the three principles, because it's only pointing us at our wisdom, our innate health, our true self, who we truly are. And we forget that uh, by following someone else. So why see many people do and what I did, I was following someone talking about the three principles. So if someone was saying something beautiful and I feel good, I link or, uh, this feeling to that person. And that's completely uh it's, it's completely wrong like if we if we uh talk about what sid said like you don't need to follow anyone just follow the feeling because you see your true self in that person because when you feel good when someone says something beautiful like you just said harry uh, i feel good not because of you but because i have this within me and that's what connects all of us. So even you don't know uh, like w when to do this and that, Sabia, about your daughter, if you have to change her school or not. Um, the, the, the more you try to deal with that as, a, as an issue, uh, you give it life. And it's like a vicious circle, really. Uh, as Einstein said, he says that you can't solve this. Uh, the, you can't solve a problem that was created on the same level. Something like that. Just paraphrase. But it says it all. Like we can't figure out uh, a solution for a, a for a problem within the same um, level of consciousness. 
And to raise our level of consciousness is to um, let the, you know, the, um, I call it sand, you know, like in the water, we try to play with it, settle down. Because the, um, the, um, the normal state of our mind is always clear. It's always, there is always wisdom. And why and, we don't see wisdom? And then what you do, and then what, sort of and what, what we yeah. do, what we do is, we we develop a um, patience. Like truth moves in a slower way than our intellect moves. Our <laughs> in mind, I want the answer now. Versus the answer will come as I sit in it. So you 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 learn to you learn to sit in your question, in your uncomfortable feeling, and know, as Omar is suggesting, because it's designed perfectly, that the when the you will recognize when the feeling comes out. You will see that. And it starts to get easier and easier to do it that way than thinking hard about something. So the wise person makes decisions in two or three seconds. I make decisions now that used to take two, three weeks, and they take two or three seconds because the feeling just comes right out. But when it doesn't come right out, I don't ask it. I don't demand it. I am not in control of that. Who knows when, right? Who knows when that feeling is going to come? It's going to come. It's going to come. I promise you, because it always comes. But we cannot control it. We are not. We are not in control of of that. But we do know it will happen. And when it does happen, we go, oh. Now I see, I sat in the feeling, I was uncomfortable, that was just a bunch of thoughts. And it came out. And the next time the same, oh, I recognize this feeling. Oh, I'm gonna think of, oh, no, no, that didn't work too well. And it comes out a little bit faster. It shows you the process. Then when your daughter comes to you and has a disturbed feeling, you say, ah, She's where I was at. And then you know how to, you don't ask her, come on, get out of it or else. You, you see a, a different way, a gentler way, because you found out you were over serious. And maybe she is too at that moment. Because seriousness is a killer. Killer. <laughs> you know, type of stuff. Good. How about you? So, oh, you have something more to say? No, I just want to uh, ask, uh, you know, Alia and Duranata, if, if they have any insights they want to share or some questions, uh, please unmute yourself, Alia. Or, you know, okay, Alia, you want to say something? Yeah, so, um, hi, Harry. <laughs> How you doing, mate? You all right? Yeah, yeah, good, good. Well, firstly, I want to say it's really, it's really lovely. Uh, got a really good vibe and had a few insights. Um, I love the gentleness in which you uh, and the ease in which you expressed and uh, where it was coming from. And it literally, what my insight was, was um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, it's going to be really hard for me to articulate, but I, I realized that the gentle surrender of what you were just speaking about when you said um, that it will come. And these guys know me on this call and I'm like, when will it happen? What is happening? I've got no patience, no patience. Um, and it's funny, it's because it's, it, for me, it's it, one of the beautiful lessons, I'd say, of when it did come, that I learned was about beautiful patience, about the journey in that 
in that um and it's almost like you kick yourself but you're laughing at yourself as well because you're like oh you know I didn't really take in the view I didn't really look even when I was seeing from this space of insecurity of control of fear there was still something to see there was still something to see and there was still something to learn and so for me I think what I took from this um I don't even know if I took anything I think what well, I did but I just don't know how to say what it is but I feel like something's happened um but um also something else that I really wanted to touch on that that really um you said you know uh about the infinite wisdom that that lays that 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 is uh that is within us and um since we're talking about Allah as as we know him and it was, it was something that I, I I think of quite a lot and I reflect on and it's <clears throat> we, there's a verse in the Quran in which um we're told when you surrender and it's talking about the principle surrendering to the fact that you don't have control when you surrender to that place, he says, I become the ears in which you, I become the eyes in which you see, the hearing in which you hear, and the speech in which you will speak. So it's allowing the divinity within you to manifest in, in a way that you will be, as Omar has explained, a kindness to humanity. What you don't even know is just you naturally flow from a space that is that is that is channeling is it's almost like a channel you open a space within yourself to allow divine wisdom to take place and sometimes when you when you're having that insight you're like oh this is amazing and when you're not you're like you know one, one, um, one of the things uh that 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 i i heard most of the things that have turned out all my bad habits and stuff most of them i didn't do i never worked on my bad habits i never worked on surrender and 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 so on it just it, as as the as i became aware well, you could say aware, but I would say happy and content. Um, I the the disposition of of all those bad habits just fell away without me working on them, and and I on a few that I was working on, they took a lot longer <laughs> because I was working on them. Mm -hmm. So 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 from from um from not trying and just enjoying what life had to offer for me i i i look back 3 or 4 years and went when did when did i become to use omar's kinder when did i become more patient you see patience and kindness is the same thing you become kinder you become more patient because you're you're not you're you're not trying to fix yourself anymore there's nothing, there's nothing to achieve you already are the eyes of that <laughs> you already you are the, it's obvious that that you're spiritual being and and all that happens is your free will and god's free will or allah's free will come in so you just let Allah do what you really are that's the reality of thing and the thinking is what the world tells us we should be and that unfortunately is not uh, a very uh, that's a good road to stress a good road to insecurity a good road to fear and when I saw that and i'm going to describe an experience so i'm up on the top of a mountain with sid banks and he says okay shoot ask me any question you want 
And I say, oh, this is interesting. Sydney Banks is asking, I can ask any question. So I start, I ask about nine spiritual questions. And then the, and every question he answers directly, easily. And then he adds, and it's all one. And I go, what's this? I only answer a question. I don't say, and it's all one. And then on the 10th question, I saw mystically, I saw a thought go out of my mouth into the abyss. I'm standing on top of a cliff overlooking a panoramic view of Salt Spring Island with Sid over here and Fergus, his dog over here. And I see thought go out and boomerang back into me as a feeling. And I go, holy mackerel, who's been creating all my suffering? And to my surprise, I looked inside and realized all the time I was blaming all these outside circumstances and all this stuff, even though I was kind of teaching the three principles, I didn't really understand thought. I simply did not understand that boomerang effect that happens. So as soon as you share a sacred feeling of Allah, what happens is that boomerangs back into you and brings you sanity, common sense, and happiness and contentment. That sacred feeling that we all are. Does that make sense? I can't pronounce your, how, what's your name, Omar? Ali? Ali? Ali. Does that make oh, yeah. sense? Does that make yes, any sense? Yes, it does. It does. It makes perfect sense. Thank you so much, Harry. Yeah, the sacred feeling will take you. At, and, and remember, answer your own questions. That's where you'll find the answers. Just be, you, be patient. They're all there. And trust that sacred feeling. I guarantee you, it's, it will just, all your bad habits will just drop away. It sounds so simple. It sounds like, what do I do? But you do do something. You give your free will consent to join in the, the party. Okay. <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> so, Renata. Renata was like, answer your own question. Okay, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Trust the feeling. So, Renata. Do you, do you, Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Renata. Renata, do you have something to share? I thought I did. I'm not sure I have. <laughs> uh, because as I was thinking it, and you were talking about the boomerang, and it's like a little bit of earwax went off, and uh, I don't know. The If I translate the feeling that I'm... What I'm hearing is, it's okay to trust. Well, isn't that a lot? That's it's a lot. everything for me. Yeah, it's everything for me too. Yeah. For all of us, really. Yeah. yeah. And, and I do love the me too feeling, like we're all together in this. Yeah. So, yeah. And it doesn't make sense to talk about, don't worry. Um, some amazing things have been happening and like a presto pot that you take off the top, all manners of thoughts and habits that I was basically giving all, all attention unwittingly are just flowing through. So if somebody says you trust the feeling, all of a sudden it's like all the times that I did and I got thinking otherwise or redirected otherwise than just trusting the feeling it's all coming up but for a brick for last few days i was still struggling from the idea that i had to struggle with all these feelings it's just prep it's just prep prep for the and, next level of consciousness that's all it is yeah i was trying to explain to somebody they said how does it feel for you these last few days and I, I just said uh, uh, less than an hour or so ago, 
I said, it feels like I'm a holographic being of energy, pure light and everything else. And there's these, like a kaleidoscope, these unfolding layers of thoughts that are live streaming through me. And I'm supposed to just relax and breathe. Sounds so, right to me. Thank you. Yeah. And by the way, it's not the first time that I hear you. And when I hear you, it's like, okay, we're here. We're good. We're listening to Harry. That's what it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> so, and Omar knows about. So I'm going to leave the space because there's a new person here, Zima. Yeah. Zima is here, but she just got here, so you're gonna let her, you know, to unless she has a question, and then, and question or or something to to say. Yeah, just uh, if you have any questions, Zima, just um, you know, just raise your digital hands or unmute yourself. Uh, so yeah, hello. Fine. I mean, I I just, I just joined now, so I obviously missed <laughs> missed the whole session. Um. So I don't know what to ask or what to say. <laughs> well, it's all right. Uh, Omar started off with saying that kindness is our default setting. And yeah. Then, and and then we asked different people. It took went in many different directions, but and then we asked how each person sort of saw that. How how do you see like because. Because kindness in the world right now can sometimes be misconstrued that you can take advantage of it. Like my brother yeah. personally believes that greed is a good thing, you know, type of thing. And I kind of suggest to him that it might be a negative emotion, but to him, it's a good thing, you know. So, and then of course, and he's a kind person, which is interesting. He is a kind person, but you, how do you see that? Yeah, I, um, I think I think there's a fine line between. Um, I mean, in terms of kindness, you could, you could either be kind and strong, or you could be kind and weak, or, or perceived to be weak, uh, depending on who's on the other side of the yeah, equation. I guess it depends on how people react to your kindness. Some people will appreciate it, and then they will. Well, kindness cannot come through that faction, Zamir. It has to come from an inside up. We'll, we'll take advantage. Oh, oh it's, it's a Zimar, by the way. Oh, Vimar, okay. Vimar. Z, Z, Zimar. Oh, Zimar, okay, good, thank you. I'm obviously gonna have a lot of fun with names here. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, uh, so Zimar, Kind, kind. You give kindness without any, any uh, expectation of what comes back. But you're correct. You can't be a fool to some, someone is attacking you with a knife, or with words, or with gossip, or etc. Or just an, as in a nasty mood. You cannot. You cannot just be say, open your chest up and go, okay, stab me, you know, type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the wisdom. You, 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 bring, you, you are kind, you never give up your kindness, but you also uh, don't injure yourself um, with, with, with uh, you know, there's a lot of people who are, let's say, are spiritual, but they don't have a practical side to them. So they, you know, they, they have a nice feeling of love, but they, they're, they seem to be trampled on a lot. That isn't what Sid was talking about, but he was not talking about losing your positive feelings for the sake that the world is a mess, you know, or that some people are a mess. And that lower level of consciousness that you're, you're talking about you start to you start to experience it from a compassionate perspective like can you imagine if you're kind 
and you're talking to a person who is taking advantage of your kindness, that person's suffering. That person is really has a misunderstanding. But if you allow it to hurt yourself, then somebody has taken on the lower level of consciousness and let it hurt you. So how I deal with that is I get, I see things a little more impersonal. Like, it's funny how on an impersonal level, things do not hurt you. And then on a personal level, they do hurt you. And so you cease to react to the scenarios like you did before. You go deeper inside yourself to a deeper level of love and understanding. And there, the kindness is protected. But how do, how do you, how do you, uh, you, said, you said that you, you take it from an impersonal level. How, how do you do that? You, you, no one can, can tell you how to do that. And nobody, you know, I can, but, but the, the answer, the answer is, first of all, you want to have a feeling of, what you need, what you are as a spiritual being. And if what you're thinking of is disrupting that, taking you away from that feeling, you know you're headed in the wrong direction. So your instincts, your positive feelings will guide you to go deeper inside to uh, uh, what we call a calmer, uh, person and we all want to go deeper than what we are but the the gentleness of the journey is we kind of walk with Allah <laughs> you know we we kind of let Allah take you there Honestly, the, the guarantee only one, <laughs> only one person can take it away from that. And guess who that is? You. You it, you are already walking in that direction. Disturb it less. And okay. It, and it will happen. <laughs> Can I, can I just add something to this, Harry? This is, this is so beautiful what you just shared. And um, this reminds me of, you know, when, when you shake the snow globe and this is, you know, when you shake the snow globe and you've got this little snows around it that goes all over the place. Um, this is thinking our thought. This is, you know, trying to figure out what I should do to be more of this or to be impersonal. And this is not working. It's more of not getting into the way because that's our, as we've been talking about, it's our default mode. That's who we truly are. We were born um, like that. We were born okay. We were born, you know, with impersonal thoughts. And then we start, um, you know, believing and having and being conditioned this and that this is good this is bad but who we truly are it's um intact that's the impersonal it's always there up for grabs when we just uh get out of the way of you know of the of being impersonal because it's not something that we do. It's how the, the system works. There is a, there is a really a kindness to this design. And the less we interrupt, the less we interrupt it, the more we benefit and we fall into that space of impersonal beauty, loving kindness. 
So just to reiterate what, what Omar is talking about, the less you worry, <laughs> judge, analyze, the easier life is going to be. I, Sid once had an image for me because I had a lot of beliefs, a busy mind, big ego type of stuff. He said, my job is there's balloons. And my job, those are your, your, thought, your belief patterns, eh? And my job is to take a pin and pop, pop, pop those beliefs. That's your job. Pop, pop, pop. Drop that thought. 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 Drop it. Go ahead. Drop it again. And you then, then you can see how you feel. The only reason you don't know how you feel is what Omar was suggesting, the, the globe has all of this stuff happening with it. And when it calms down, it's easy to see where you want to- Clearly. Put. Sorry? Clearly, yeah, you, you, see, that's clearly. right. That's, that's actually a very good addition. This is, calms down. It's clear, clear mind. This is this is really funny because this happened to me just before, right before this call here, and I told you, um, I I was really nervous, not because of the call per se, but because what happened before the call, because I had to change the location to find a quieter location so we could have this conversation, and we had guests last minute, so I had to change location. And so basically where I live is like 10, 15 minutes walk from where my grandma lives, where I am right now. So I had to run. <laughs> and I was like having all this, um, you know, uh, worried thoughts about what if I, you know, if something happened, if there is not a good network there. And what if, uh, you know, I don't find my grandmother in, in the house and, this and that. So I had all this weird thinking going on. But once we start the conversation and one, once I just, you know, I, I, uh, at some point I just found myself um, present in a good feeling without me trying to do anything about it. That's, that's where this, this is where we get um, uh, misleaded. We get caught up. Like when we try to, you know, um, to figure out what to do, what not to do. So once I started the call with Harry, uh, I was there with him 100%, not thinking about this and that. And I, I, like, I still have thoughts coming in but I just, um, I don't know, but I've just didn't give them that much power. I just let them pass because uh, funnily enough, that's how the, the system works. They just pass by. But uh, sometimes we see that, you know, this thought is true. I mean, it, it, this could happen. This could, you know, this could make me feel bad and this, but it's not what's, the, what's inside the thought. It's just the, um, that kind of thinking we are having. It's not what we are thinking about. It's the fact that we are thinking. And at that moment, um, I didn't see it clearly until I did. But before I did, I just let my thoughts be. Because at some point, um, peace and connection, and all these beautiful feelings just comes. Uh, they just kick in. Does that make sense? Uh, is it Zimar? Is it... Yes, yes, uh, yes, it does make sense. Um, thank you so much for the explanation. Yeah, just 
just relax. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I think this is, this, is a, this is like a nice summary. It's easier, easier said than done, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just uh, and so we we thank you for for coming. We really appreciate uh, your participation and uh, and uh, we'll continue. Please support us in in where we're going with this. Um, and thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, this has been Thank beautiful. You. I think. Uh, does anyone got anything to say or anything to add, or should we just? Um, I think we're. Can you just tell me? Can you just tell me how you two met? What's the what's the what's the background between? Sorry. Between your. Uh, yes. What's sure. the background between I've... your relationship? Is is he your coach or? Sorry, what is the question? She, she, she's asking how we met. So I, I've uh, I've already talked about this in the intro video. I don't know if you've watched yeah, I'm it. I'm sorry. I'm but sorry. Uh, there, no, it's okay. Uh, do you, would you like to go ahead and talk about this area? Or would you I like don't. Me to say I it? don't know either, Omar. I haven't listened to intro. Sorry. Well, uh, okay. Well, it is on the basic. Basically, um, I was doing this. 24 7 thing just as a volunteer thing and uh, no one had showed up and omar was a, was was another uh coach and and so he said okay i'll i'll stay for 10 minutes and we started to talk i'm going to explain it for and you see when it because the the feeling was so pure what basically happened, Omar thinks it was me, but it wasn't me, it was us. We just seemed to, so within a few seconds, a half hour had disappeared and we had this connection. And I was thinking, well, um, this is good and, and I'm, I'll give Omar a little coaching. Um, and so we agreed to meet again next he came back a couple of times and then we started to talk and as we were talking there's only one thing uh zimar and sabia that i am or uh, uh, renata that i'm really looking, yeah i'm really looking for is the quality of the feeling i don't really look at the outside person and you know this or that i'm just looking for a I'm going to say spiritual, but a, a, a deep feeling that the person has. And I really, really liked Omar's feeling. I could identify with it. I could see it had an uplift to it. It wasn't just, I want to be happy and content in this material world. It was, well, what about uh, some of this stuff? And that feeling I trust. And from that feeling, as Omar and I were talking, it doesn't matter what the, who was doing what and everything. We suddenly came up in the union that it would be good to do this room. And that's what I was looking for. I mentioned to Omar, you'll pay me in spiritual currency. This is spiritual the, currency. This is the spiritual currency that it's is our currency. Our <laughs> currency, our love to share with, with you. And what happens is, as we share, guess what happens? We grow. <laughs> you know, we're here answering your question and your question, when in reality, we're answering our question. Because of course, we're all one. And so that feeling that Omar had was a privilege to, to sh join and share. And that's, that's the... Uh, the spiritual unity of the three principles that we were talking about in this uh, web first webinar series. Um, and, and as Harry mentioned, uh, it was such a joy to, I was always looking forward to talk with Harry. Uh, we used to talk once a week. And at some point we just realized that we could do something together that could, you know, 
uh, and that we could share with others because it's all about sharing and as Harry said it's all about sharing and I uh, the more you get impacted yourself it's impossible to not want to share with others because you see that they they uh, they have a change of heart as well so yeah that's how we came up with this idea to set up a group and do this um, you know this work together we don't have a plan we are just guided by Allah by divine mind by uh, this infinite intelligence and that's what uh, um, that's our drive that's our uh, and, GPS and to bring the Muslim and non-Muslim feeling where the Muslim feeling is strong and together in one because as yeah. as Omar mentioned three principles used to have a very strong diverse group when Dr. Roger Mills was around but when he moved on it lost all of that and now we are a fresh version of learning and can you can see I don't even can't even pronounce the names let alone know about all of what you understand so yeah so yeah that's how we met and how this uh, yeah, came to you. existence thank you Hada. beautiful story thank you. It is, isn't it? It is a beautiful yeah. story. Two, two people from totally two. It's just the com the common feeling. That's that's all it is. The common feeling. And, and, and by the way, could you just mention where you are uh, based? Uh, Me? We mentioned that before. Yeah. Just so they could. I, I'm president of uh, ACT training. A My website is acttraining.biz. And uh, I'm located in Vancouver, BC, and uh, I'm se almost 74, and I have clients all over the world doing fascinating things. And, and one thing I want people to understand, everything that I'm doing now, I never did, be 16, since I'm 69 years old, everything is fresh, everything. So it's always a beginning. I love it. Isn't it great? You don't have to. Everybody's retiring, and I'm just beginning. <laughs> Took me a little while. Took me a little while. I, I love that about Harry. <laughs> I love this about you, Harry. Because uh, you know, I see a lot of people caught up in their, um, you know, their form. You know, they they're aging, but. Uh, when I see people like who really, you know, have um, a higher level of consciousness and who have these glimpses of what are the three principles and this, you know, this uh, infinite intelligence, they are like, you know, 20 years old. <laughs> they, they don't really uh, have this block. And that keep them uh, fresh as, as Harry. And I, I, I really like this about you, Harry. Um, well, keep it yeah. going. Don't stop, you know, keep, go, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I'm based in, in Casablanca, uh, in Morocco. My website, well, I don't have a website. Yet. I, we've got a group, me and Harry, uh, uh, called Tawhid, uh, um, Spiritual Unity of the Three Principles. Um, you could find that on Facebook. And yeah, um, if you haven't joined yet, you're welcome to join. It's just going to be sharing more of this. So I think this is a really good place to end this call. Uh, it's been an amazing webinar. And thank you all for joining us. It's been really, really good. Thank you, Zimar. Thank you, Renata. Thank you, Sabia, Ali.